Hello everybody, for this next set of sections we're going to combine 11, 2, 3, and 4 together into a single concept known as surface area and volume. Um, the textbook splits it into different sections based on each individual 3D figure and does a single lesson on each individual one. But rather than do that and spend a lot of days on it, we're just simply going to combine it all into one because it's very similar to what you've seen in the previous lessons from this chapter. You're just going to need a formula based off how the shape's constructed and then plug the numbers in and grab a calculator. So it's pretty much the same lesson we did for perimeter and area except now as you can see in the pictures, they are three-dimensional figures, so we jump up to surface area and volume. Um, first up would be a prism. Uh, by definition, a prism has two shapes that are the same, and those count as the bases. If you look at the shaded portion here, the triangle that's on the bottom and the triangle that's on the top, so that capital B is the area of that base triangle, and the height of the prism is literally the distance between those two triangular bases. The way a prism is built is it's those two bases plus a series of rectangles wrapped around the two of them to make the entire 3D picture. So when we go to calculate the surface area of it, what's known as lateral area, just the rectangles, is the perimeter around this base, which in this picture is a triangle, but it could be any shape, times the height of the entire prism. That way you're finding all of the rectangles in one single shot with one single formula. You could do each of them individually, but that ends up taking more time, especially in bigger pictures. If we want to find the total surface area, we take those rectangles and literally add the two bases. In this picture, it's all the rectangles wrapped around, plus the two triangles, top and bottom. Cylinder is the same idea for as a prism, but we have the special case of the bases are circles, so we alter our formula to account for circle. 2 pi r being the circumference times the height, that would be, quote, the perimeter of the circle. And then same thing, we would add two circles, the top and the bottom, to make the full cylinder. But just as we saw in the previous section, all of these problems are pretty much have formula plug-in number. If we look at the two examples underneath for surface area, we have a prism that's made up of a trapezoid, the front and the back. So if we want to calculate its surface area, we simply start with the formula. The surface area for any prism is h times p plus two base areas. And now we go fill everything in. The height of the prism is 15 feet, the front trapezoid to the back one, times the perimeter of that base. So we need the four sides of the trapezoid. We have an 18 on top, a 12 on the left, a 23 on the bottom, and a 20 on this slanted diagonal side. That takes care of all four rectangles, because you distributed this out, which we're not going to do. It's easier to calculate it this way. But 15 times 18 is the top rectangle. 15 times 12 is this rectangle. 15 times 23 is this bottom one. And 15 times 20 is this slanted diagonal one. You've done all four rectangles in one shot. That's what saves the time with the formula. Plus 2 times, we need to do the base, which is a trapezoid. So that's back to the previous lesson. 1 half times the height of the trapezoid, 12, times the sum of its two parallel bases, which would be 18 and 23. The hardest part of all the formula problems is get the numbers in the correct spots. Once you achieve this step, it's grab a calculator and solve it. This all multiplies and adds up to 1,587 square feet. It is still an area problem, so it's still squared units. Example two shows what if you tried to work it out backwards. So we have a soup can, which is a cylinder, and we're told the diameter is three inches, so we can convert that to a radius very quickly. Radius will be one and a half inches, and now it's a matter of fill out the formula and calculate it out. This one will require a little bit of algebra. The surface area for a cylinder would be two pi r squared, plus 2 pi rh, at which point 2 times, we'll always use 3.14 as the approximation for pi in our work. Um, realistically, any problem you get, you would just have to read the details, whatever's in the directions of that particular problem. More often than not, 3.14 is going to be the decimal that gets used. Um, the radius that we found, 1.5 squared, 
plus 2 times 3.14 times that radius again times the height that we don't know and we were asked to find. We are told, however, what all of this has to equal because that's the first sentence. It ends up being 51.84 square inches. Now it's a matter of simplify the computation and turn it into an algebra problem. So 51.84, if I take all of these, I end up getting 14.13. And if I take all of these, I'll end up getting 9.42 times the h that we don't know. Even though it's decimals, that doesn't change the concept. It's a standard two-step algebra problem. If we subtract the 14.13 off, 37.71 is equal to 9.42h. If we divide out the 9.42, h will come out to be 4.003 and a bunch of other decimals. So our standard rounding would make the height 4 inches, since we would always take it to the second decimal place anyway. <clears throat> we have another two examples on prism and cylinder, except the second time around, we're going to have to look at what's their volumes. We're going to have to look at the space inside of them. So, all that changes is the formula work, and volume is definitely the easier problem every time. To find the volume of any prism or cylinder, anything that's in this family of shapes, it's the area of its base times how tall the prism is, or if it's laying on its side, how deep into the background it goes. Because nothing says you couldn't say, like, here's the triangle, and then into the background would be the height. So I mean, don't, don't get stuck on height has to be top to bottom. It may be front to back if it's laying on its side. But notice the cylinder form is the same way. We, the base is a circle, so pi r squared, the area of that circle, times the height. The idea for volume of anything in the prism cylinder family is what's the area of the first one? And then basically height is how many did you stack up to make the 3D picture? Think like we cut a bunch of triangles out and put them in a pile. Um, think like a poker chip and then stack a bunch more of them on top of it. That's how you're creating these two figures. It's ultimately just build the formula like all the rest of them have been. So if we head down for the two examples here, we have a rectangular prism. Um, let's say we make this one the base. You can make any of the rectangles the base. It just changes which number goes where, but ultimately it doesn't change the answer. The volume for a prism is the area of its base shape times the height. So in parentheses, we'll look at just this rectangular base that's highlighted. Rectangles are length times width, or base times height, whichever you like, times the height of the whole prism. From this triangle that's 8 by 12, it is 39 feet across to the other rectangle that's 8 by 12, so times 39. Which you notice, if you look at the fact that it's just three numbers multiplied, you could multiply them in any arrangement. So you could always say the 8 by 39 rectangle is the base, and it's 12 feet tall to the other one, and any other variation of it. You end up just multiplying these three numbers together no matter what. Uh, it comes out to be a product of 3,744 feet cubed. For the cylinder down here, let's actually get into a little bit of word problem concepts. Uh, some pool is drawn here as a cylinder, and she plans to only fill it to a depth of four feet. So let's correct in the picture now. The pool may be four and a half feet tall, but we're only filling it four feet deep with water. So we don't want to accidentally use the 4.5. We're not filling it all the way up to the top. And then you're using a hose that has 80 cubic feet per hour. So the question becomes, how many hours will it take? Well, let's go find the volume, how much water we're about to fill into this cylinder, and then argue if we can do 80 per hour, how many hours will it take? So the volume of a cylinder would be pi r squared times its height. So 3.14 times, I need the radius. So if the diameter was 27, we can cut that in half to make it the radius of 13.5. So 13.5 squared. And the height, just like we corrected the picture, we're only filling it up to a height of 4 feet. Height and depth are interchangeable concepts when it comes to volume. Either I'm arguing I'm going 4 feet and filling it up from the bottom 4 feet of depth of water, or if I start at the bottom and work my way up, it's only going to go 4 feet high. So they're interchangeable words when it comes to that. 
Multiply all of those out and we'll end up with 2,289.06 feet cubed, since it is a volume. But that's not the end of the problem because you were asked how many hours does it take. So you need to do one last division. If I need 2,289.06 feet cubed, and I can only fill 80 per hour, dividing those out and rounding it off will give me 28.61 hours to fill up the pool. What we're going to do for the next few pages of the notes here, and this is why we combined these lessons together, you're going to find the next couple of pages do the exact same thing. You're going to get one page with a couple of examples for surface area, pyramid, and cone. One page with a couple of examples, volume of pyramid and cone, and then we're going to do the same thing, air, surface area, and volume for a sphere. So you're going to find that it's pretty much the same problem style. The only thing that changes is new picture and therefore new formula to apply. So let's jump into pyramid and cone here. For surface area, we need to discuss one quick thing here. We have two different heights to consider in pyramids and cones. This one on the outside, given by an italic cursive L, is called the slant height. And it is used for all the surface area calculations because it's the outside height and it will be the height of the triangle when we do the outside surfaces. When we go to do volume on the next page, notice where this H is in the picture. That is the actual true height of the pyramid, and that will be used on the next page for all the volume problems because that height is actually inside the pyramid, so it does represent the volume. As far as formulas go, it's pretty much have formula and follow. The logic is really simple. Pyramid, we only have one base instead of two, and instead of rectangles, you can clearly see in the picture, these are all triangles wrapped around it. So we take what we had before, which was H and P, well, we change it to L because it needs to be slant height, the outside one. And notice we introduced the one-half fraction. We turned the rectangles into triangles. We only have one B. There's only one base, not two. Same thing happens here. If you go back and look at the cylinder work, you'll notice there were a bunch of twos in all of these. Now they're not there. We cut them all in half because there's only one circle. It's only a triangle wrapped around it, not a rectangle. All we did was take the formulas from the first surface area chunk with prism and cylinder, and we turned them into half of themselves to create pyramid and cone. All right, let's run through examples here. Uh, we have a pyramid here based off the picture. So the surface area for a pyramid is one half of its slant height times the perimeter plus a single base. So we'll do the one half. The slant height is the height of the triangle on the outside. So that is the 12.2 that's here. And then the perimeter of the base, we'll do the same thing we would do in every problem. 7 plus 7 plus 7. Basic perimeter concept, just simply add them up. If you want to call that 21 from the beginning, that's entirely up to you. Plus the area of one single base, and that is this triangle on the bottom that the pyramid's standing on. So 1 half times its base length, which would be 7, times its height, which would be the 6.1 across it. The key to getting the numbers right is to recognize this part for capital B is looking at this triangle on the bottom only. Base of 7, height of 6.1. The fact that it goes up in the air, 12.2, is irrelevant to this part of the math. That's here for the 3D portion. At which point, multiply and add. We get 128.1 combined with 21.35 to be a grand total of 149.45 centimeters squared. The Cohen problem works the same way. It's just going to be we have to work out the algebra here. So the surface area for a cone is going to be pi r squared plus pi times r times the slant height. We'll do our usual conversion. A diameter of 18 forces us to have a radius that's 9. And let's go fill in all the numbers we know. 822.78 is 3.14 times 9 squared plus 3.14 times 9 times the slant height we've been asked to solve for. Simplify this down and make it easy. 822.78 is equal to... 254.34 plus 28.26L, and we'll do two-step algebra. If we subtract this off, 
68.44 is equal to 28.26L. Divide this out, we get that L is equal to 20.146 and a bunch of decimals. So we would do our standard rounding, excuse me, 1146 and a bunch of decimals. So it comes out to be 20.11 and this was in centimeters. Just like we saw on the first chunk though, volume will always be the quicker problem. So it's a lot easier to do the volume question. Um, again, have formula. Notice it's the formula from prism, one third. If you actually look at a picture of how a prism turns into a pyramid, you end up cutting off the left part and cutting off the right part. So you create three pyramids, but obviously only want one of them for the formula. Same logic in a cone. We cut off the left part of a cylinder and the right part of a cylinder. We've created three cones, but I obviously only want one of them for the actual volume of a cone. So all we do is the same thing we saw before, but we introduce the one-third fraction in the front of it. All right, so for the pyramid problem here, notice the way the pictures changed. This 10 is the true height of the pyramid from tip down to middle of triangle down the bottom. That's how you know you're doing volume. That's the true actual inside height of the pyramid. The volume for a pyramid would be equal to one third of its base times its height. So we'll just calculate out one third times, I'll leave a blank space for the base and the height we just highlighted a second ago is 10. The base is a triangle down here on the bottom. So one half of its base length 12 times the triangle's height 7.5. At which point multiply all of those out and get 150 millimeters cubed. Example two with the cylinder and the cone here gives you your first look at you can use individual formulas to build bigger ones. So if we read through the cylinder's height's 20 We'll do our conversion here. Diameter of 14 creates radius of 7. Now it's a matter of how do we find the volume of this picture. It's a cylinder with two cones, drawn by the dotted lines, cut out of it. So build that formula very literally. The volume of the entire cylinder with two cones removed from it, minus two cones. Because that, that is a correct formula. Now it's just a matter of plug them all in. From the previous pages, cylinder, so pi r squared h, minus two times the cone formula from the top of this page, one third of pi r squared h. Now at this point, you got two options. You could actually calculate all of this out and do it algebraically, because you have pi r squared h and pi r squared h. You could treat it like a single variable. You could argue this is z minus two times one third z. That's a little high end for the algebra though. So if you're not great at seeing that, nothing stops you from just outright plugging in all the numbers and grabbing a calculator. Both skills work. I mean, it's, it's very easy to use either one of them. So times, so 3.14 for pi, seven squared, and 20 for the height of the whole cylinder, minus two times one third times pi times the radius, seven squared again. The height of the cone, that's a matter of look at the picture. The cone goes to the middle dot, so the cone is only 10 units tall. At which point, grab a calculator, multiply, subtract everything. You end up getting 2,051.47 inches cubed. Once you get to the number step, though, it's pretty much calculator and go. So, um, the only shape we have left, we haven't discussed anything about a sphere. So this will be the last part we tackle here. Um, for sphere, we are looking at basic pick parts of a picture. We still have a center dot because it still follows all the properties from circle. So we still have a radius. And if we go the full distance across, it is still a diameter. None of those circle concepts change. The only one we get is this new one here. We get what's known as the great circle, which is the largest one around the center dot. Since it is 3D, we have different circles. We could draw different ones of sizes depending on where we were. And that creates what's known as hemispheres as well, which is why there's a space here next to the formulas. For a general sphere, the formulas are very, very quick since radius is the only variable we have in them. For surface area, 4 times pi r squared, 
for volume four thirds times pi r cubed, because that has, does have to become a cube for the measurements. Now, if we get a hemisphere, if we actually take a sphere and cut it in half, all we have to do is adjust the formulas accordingly. So for surface area, let's do basic arithmetic. Four pi r squared, we're gonna cut it in half. But here's the clever part. Now that we've sliced the sphere in half, this great circle that's on the top of this picture is an outside surface and needs to be included. So we gained a pi r squared from that circle that's on the top. Very simple counting. Four of these divided by two leaves me with two of these, plus another one leaves me with three of these. So if you get it cut in half, three pi r squared is the formula for it. Similar logic with the volume. The volume is four thirds of pi r cubed, and if it's only a hemisphere, we'll cut it in half. But we don't pick up anything extra. We're still only using half of the inside space in the picture. If we take the four thirds and divide it by two, we end up with two thirds of pi r cubed. So it's really quick. Calculate it out and just simply divide by two. The only special thing is in the surface area concept, realize that great circle has now become a surface. It's now on the outside of the picture. As far as problems go, it's just like the rest of them. Plug in a formula and spit out an answer. So we've got find the volume if we know the great circle's area is 201.06. It's a two-part problem. We'll take the area of a circle, and that's from previous work, so pi r squared. So 201.06 is the result of 3.14 times some radius squared. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll divide the 3.14 out. So 64.03 is equal to r squared. If we take the square root of both sides, we get 8.00, so we'll simply call the radius 8 inches, which now presents me the volume problem. The volume for a sphere is 4 thirds of pi r cubed. So we'll take 4 thirds times 3.14 times eight raised to the third power. Multiply all those out for 2,143.57 inches cubed. The last two examples, we're gonna tie a couple of pictures together and see if we can just use all of the formulas that we've presented. So for two, we're asked to find the surface area. Well, let's think about what we have here. This is gonna be where you learn some good algebra tricks when it comes to formula. We have a cone on top, so the surface area of a cone. We have a hemisphere on the bottom here, so plus the surface area of a hemisphere. Now think about the logic. The circle for the cone, that's on the inside of the figure, so we have to lose a circle, so minus the area of one circle. And we also counted this circle as part of the hemisphere, so we have to lose it a second time. We counted this great circle with a diameter of nine meters in both of these formulas, but it's not on the outside for either one of them, so we have to remove it from the calculation. We just simply need to build this. So surface area of a cone would be pi r squared plus pi r l. Surface area of a hemisphere from the previous page, three pi r squared minus area of a circle, single pi r squared, minus area of a circle again, pi r squared. Now, I'm gonna do the algebra for this one because I really don't wanna bother with 3.14 times r squared over and over and over again. Let's go do like terms. I have one pi r squared, I add three of them, so I'm now up to four pi r squared. I subtract one, I'm back to three pi r squared. I subtract another, I'm back to two pi r squared. And then no other term in the entire problem has the L in it. So pi r L is just coming along for the ride. You turned this entire composite formula into a single one. This is the one we'll use to solve it. So two times pi times the radius. If the diameter is nine, the radius should be 4.5. So 4.5 squared plus pi again times the radius again, times the slant height from the cone, 13. Multiply all those up and add them together, 
end up with 310.86 meters squared. Which brings us to our last one here. We've got a hemisphere on the top and a cylinder on the bottom. And if we read the story, what's the maximum amount of grain the silo can hold? That is clearly asking for its volume on the inside. So let's go build what this would be. It would be the volume of the cylinder plus the volume of the hemisphere on the top. So let's build our formula. Pi r squared h, courtesy of the cylinder, plus 2 thirds of pi r cubed, courtesy of the hemisphere. We need the radius and the height. So let's go to the picture. If the diameter is 22, we know it's 11 for the radius. But that also helps us with the height calculation because it must also mean 11 is here for going up for the hemisphere, and that leaves me 34 for this portion for the cylinder. So now I have all the numbers I need. 3.14 times a radius of 11 squared times a height of 34 for the cylinder plus 2 thirds times 3.14 times a radius of 11 cubed, courtesy of the hemisphere on top. Multiply everything out and add them together, and you should end up with 15,704.19 cubic feet of space inside the silo. So that is how much grain it could hold. That's everything for 11, 2, 3, and 4. The assignment will be very similar. It'll just give you random shapes mixed together and apply correct formula. As you've seen in every one of them, the secret to doing formula problems is very literally write down the formula and build it and then plug the numbers and calculate it. Don't try to get creative and try to, you know, shortcut anything. If you take the time to write the formula out, you will do really, really well with formula problems. Uh, if there's any questions, make sure to ask your teacher and see everybody in the next section.